The question is, do you need this tool? So let me show you using four different tape measures, the problem, the measurement problem, this tool tries to solve. And it's right here. You get to a corner with your tape and the tape curves and you can't see exactly what your measurement is. Now, tape measures for a long time have solved this problem. Now this guy says plus two inches and you make your measurement and you drop the tape measure to the corner and then just add two inches to what it says on the tape. Right here it says 34 inches. That means it's a 36 inch measurement. Right there, 36 inches. And every tape measure has this built into it. So it's kind of a weird problem to be solving because it's kind of already been solved. This is a bigger tape measure, three inch measurement or 76 millimeters if you're metric. Anyway, you lay it down, you got three inches on the tape. That thing says 33 inches. That means we have this 36 inch measurement. Even this old guy, this is an ancient tape, says add two inches straight away. Same thing, measure it up. Set your, set your tape, go to the corner, look at where you're at. It says 34, that means 36. All right, so, so it's a problem. It is hard to measure with a curved tape, but tape measures are already built for this. All right, now, if you want to put something up against your wall or your cabinet or whatever, you can always use a carpenter's pencil. Those things are universally half an inch thick. No kidding. It'll read 35 and a half inches right here. That means 36. Grab your pencil, stick it up against your object, and you're all set. So here's another measurement with the same problem, and you could just use a hard ruler. And this guy adds an inch. You can tell it's going to be somewhere over 21 here, but it gives you an inch. Just look to your tape measure, and you can tell it's actually uh, 21 and an eighth. You could also use a piece of stock stock wood three quarter inch wide you could figure out a way to put that up against your uh, object that you're measuring to and add three quarters of an inch all right now if you really want to make something special like you want something in your pocket to solve this so-called problem you could grab a dowel rod or, or a pencil or anything and you could mark one inch increments on it and then you could hold that up against the destination that you're measuring to but if the dowel rod isn't substantial enough cut yourself a piece of steel won't take you too long. Cut yourself a piece of steel, mark one inch and two inches, and do the same thing. Cut some increments in it, and you have your own DIY add an inch tool that you can use to measure up against any kind of object that's gonna curve that tape. Now, I got a little bit ultra fancy here and stamped a one and a two at my inch increments. Completely not necessary, but I don't know, I thought it looked kind of cool. Anyway, uh, the way you use this is you just lay it down, Lay it down against your object that you're measuring to, and same thing. You know, look to your mark at the top, deduct an inch, and there you've got it. Twenty. That's twenty and an eighth, which would be twenty-one and an eighth. All right. So before we get into it, here's a look at the add an inch. Um, it has the thumb screw here, which allows you to tighten down on your tape if you want to do that. You can also leave it loose, or you could just pull it out if you don't want the thumb screw. It also has a couple levels. Obviously, one going this way and one going this way. I haven't used those. I figured you could probably find a use for them. Uh, the orientation is like this. This is like your little peep window into your tape. You'll see that in a second. And this little etch mark right here, this little carrot is the one inch mark. So this is a right-handed tape. Uh, right-handed tapes have numbers in this orientation. So I'd be measuring from the left over here and you just slide this guy onto your tape and boom, you're good to go. Uh, so obviously if I'm measuring to right here, and I'll show you this in a second, it would be at the set, it would read seven inches, but that was actually eight, an eight inch measurement. So it just adds an inch straight up from here to there. And I'll show you the thumb screw. If you want, you can tighten it down and this guy's not gonna move. And then this is my big fat uh, 25 foot tape. And I just wanted to show you the fit on here in case you're using a bigger tape measure. It actually fits just fine. You know, the curve is probably not exactly designed for this size because it pops out the bottom a little bit, but not a big deal at all. So that would be like the six inch mark right there. And it's gonna read five inches and you add an inch. Oh, and by the way, you can leave this guy on your tape if you're making like a short measurement. So let's say I make a foot long measurement right there. And I know I'm gonna have to make another one. You can, just push it and leave it on the tape, not a big deal. It's also uh, 
you know, probably just as easy to pop it off. Okay, so here's the tool in a very ideal situation. Very easy to access. I'm measuring from the left to the right, and I put the tool in place, and it gets me over to almost 12 inches. And in the window, it's reading 1 16th shy of 11 inches, which would mean it's 11 and 15 sixteenths. Every measurement is not an ideal situation like that one. And I'm just, this is a staircase I've been working on recently. And, you know, I've got some sideways measurements. I've got some funky angles I need to measure. And a lot of it's out of reach. So the add an inch tool in an ideal situation is pretty sweet. But sometimes you don't have an ideal situation. And I really haven't been able to make use of it in a lot of real life carpentry scenarios. All right, so here I'm going to show you what it's like to use the add an inch uh, in the field in a real situation. And uh, I'm building a small case right here for some weights, like some barbells. And I'm measuring from a point just off camera over here on the left. And I'm going to set my, uh, the nose of my tape measure over there. Set it in place. Pull the tape over. And it reads to me just a little bit over 33 and a half. I'm going to go to use the add an inch. All right, so here's how you do it. Um, get it in the right orientation, slip it on your tape measure, and you wanna put it kinda near where you think you're gonna need it. So I'm going down here to 33 and a half. So remember, it was just a little bit over 33 and a half. So I'm going to 33 and a half. And I'll set my tape on the left, just like I was. And I'll bring it over here to the right, and then I'll push it to my spot. All right, I push it to my spot. The cool thing about it is that you can pick it up then and make your reading. Like Just shy of 27 and a half. And then I'll pop my add an inch on there. And I'll put it right about 27, and, almost 27 and a half. Set it in place. That looks like a good fit. And you can see in the window here, it's reading 26 and 7 16 which brings you out to 27 and 7 16 And then as I mentioned earlier, it's got this thumb screw on here, but I wouldn't really ever want to lock it in place. I haven't had a reason to lock it in place. Um, inherently, I've wanted this guy to be able to slide around on my slot on my uh, tape just because I'm always making different measurements. But I'm assuming someone maybe wants to dial this guy in, get it exactly, say, at 28 inches, and maybe use it almost like a jig or something like that and lock it in. So there is that option. I just haven't been, been uh, finding much use for it. All right, now for this measurement of this cubby, which I really desperately need to build a box for, let's just do it three ways. One is to estimate, and that looks like 14 and a half to me. I'm not exactly sure, but I would guesstimate 14 and a half. This is my two inch tape. I can put it in place, slide it over. It reads 12 and a half, so I know to add two is 14 and a half. And then if I were to use the add an inch tool, I would slide it on here. Scroll it over right around 14 and a half, you know, kind of get it where I think it's going to end up. Set it in place, push it, set it in place, push it. And then I'll take a look at my reading. And it actually comes in just a touch over 14 and a half. So 13, not even, not even 7 16 but just a little bit over. And you know, that might be right. That might be exactly right. Obviously the only way to know for sure is to go ahead and cut that first piece if I'm, if I'm trying to build a very, very precise uh, box. And then if I want to use my two inch dowel rod, I can lock this guy in over here, put my dowel rod down, my one inch markings, just past 13 and a half is where I hit, set my tape in place throw this bad boy down and it tells me 13 and a half, just over 13 and a half, which is the same reading I was getting with the add an inch. And if I want to go to two, it would be just over 12 and a half, which adding two inches to that would be just over 14 and a half. All right, so those are my thoughts on the add an inch uh, add-on to your tape measure. 
You know, uh, it's kind of a mixed review. I think it's a pretty decent tool, well made and everything. It's just that it kind of solves a problem that doesn't completely exist for a lot of us. Uh, I've been getting on just fine without this guy. Um, at the same time, it does the job and if you're sort of like me, you might like to have a lot of tools at your disposal and in your kit just in case there's a moment when you need something like this. And in that case, you might want to pick one of these up. You also might benefit from making your own at an inch. Uh, if you've got comments or thoughts, leave me some down below. I'd love to hear what you think. In the meantime, go make something cool and I will see you in the next build video.